Writer, producer, director Peter Joseph is the man responsible for bringing us the extremely controversial documentary Zeitgeist in Zeitgeist Addendum, meaning the spirit of the age. That's what Zeitgeist means in its society. It's a film of the experience of a dominant culture climate that defines an era in the very controversial progression of people, of the world at large. Here he is with us this hour on Coast to Coast. Peter, how are you? I'm very good, George. Thank you for having me on. Tell me about this evolution. How did you conceive of this uh, idea to do Zeitgeist, first of all, before you even did Addendum? Well, essentially, you know, I work in New York in the commercial industry, which is, of course, very dull and very unrewarding. And and I've listened to your shows and various other people's research about esoteric topics and controversial topics. And I began to discover, you know, all these underlying problems with the system. And, of course, 9-11 happened, and that was a cataclysmic realization. Once you go through that material, you realize that, you know, the government story is actually the conspiracy theory. And actually, to sidetrack slightly, religion, of course, is always fascinating to me ever since I was a child. I was born into kind of a Catholic type of environment, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't... It wasn't oppressive in any way. I kind of my parents were not really religious. Their their families were. So it was, I was around it a lot, and I was fascinated by it. And even at a young age, I just kind of felt alienated, you know, going to these rituals and things like this. So I always thought about it, and I always read books about it, and I started discovering other forms of literature, you know, things that sort of began to relate the these established religions to earlier religions, which is of course the first part of the first film. So these are just general issues with me that I had been thinking about. And then, of course, the third part of the film, which dealt with the financial system, which I continued in the new film, right. essentially I felt was um, profound to realize because of how important the monetary structure is to everything that we do. So, And then, of course, the, you know, the, the great story of the Federal Reserve and the obvious fraud and the various nuances of all of these elements of this, this power elite that has come to fruition that's been around for a long time. And based on the structure, will be around for a long time unless we do something, and we can talk about that more. So what I did, being a commercial producer, which is, of course, very boring and not unrewarding, <laughs> I decided to do a program in Lower Manhattan where I created, I created Zeitgeist, and I presented the film for free to, as a form of public awareness for my own satisfaction. I, you know, five, six-night run of, of presenting this film for free to an audience. I mean, at that point in time, actually, I didn't have clearance for a good amount of it. I never expected it. To have any real any interest whatsoever i did it for me you know as my own expression and sure. i showed it and then it was done after a six night run in, in manhattan and then i tossed the thing online you know just like anyone tossed something up on youtube yeah yeah and then before i knew it some somebody started posting blogs and then the thing just erupted with interest and it was fascinating and then i had to retroactively go back and deal with the legal hassles it was a big nightmare it really began as just a personal expression that i wanted to do in, in an attempt to do something to communicate you know, what I felt was important, this train of thought moving from religion, which is a very foundational structure, to the whole of society. For example, you know, our prison system today is essentially a form of, you know, retribution. Basically, the fact that we punish people in our system as opposed to reviewing why they perform their actions, why they commit crimes, that's a colossal flaw in our structure. And we can blame religion for that because this is the type of mentality that's been set up, at least in my perspective. Naturally, the name Zeitgeist is relevant, too, because it's sure. dealt with the, the culture, but myth, the myth of religion, the myth of 9-11, the myth of the financial system, as far as what people think it is and what it really is when you actually step back and, and take a nice, objective look at it and, and do your homework. Peter, how many hits did you get and do you continue to get for Zeitgeist? Well, unfortunately, Google, they stopped, uh, they stopped counting both publicly and privately for me. They stopped at about 28 million, and that was about <laughs> that was about six or seven months ago. Isn't that amazing? And considering how it's been multiplied through multiple networks, you know, different video posts, and of course, YouTube had millions for multiple sections. Of course, you can only have 10 minutes on YouTube, so you've, you know, it's hard to it's hard to culminate all that and figure out the numbers. But no, I'd say by now it's had probably it, conservatively about 50 million, based on a simple projection. You know, going slightly down as time was absolutely forward. staggering. Yeah, yeah, it's been just amazing. The Internet's an incredible thing, and it's, we definitely need to preserve this thing and make sure that the, you know, the, co- the corporations don't come in and try to regulate it because that's going to be a nightmare if we lose that freedom. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the, the evolution of Zeitgeist Addendum, which is so appropriate for what is going on today, let's talk a little bit about that, Peter, where it really looks at the structure of the world's economic monetary system. Why did you go in that direction? Because of things that are going on now? Well, on a 
mostly, yes, because of things that were going on now, but I also, during my, my own development after the first film came out, the endless question to me, which of course I considered anyway, was what do we do? You know, the religion thing was, was very controversial and still is, and it's, there's nothing to do about that. But when you get into the banking structure and the power elite and 9-11, you know, people feel very desperate when they hear people talk about this. So the ultimate question is what do we do? So I just sat down and I started thinking about the root causes of this type of aberrant group behavior. What is it that causes a, a person or a group to seek differential advantage over another person or a group. And obviously there are, many, there are many sources of that, but I found that the monetary system, not only structurally, but in its psychological presence, whether it's capitalist or communist or fascist or socialist, you know, these distinctions are, are slightly empty because underneath all of them you have what this thing I call monetaryism, where you have a system of competition where scarcity is always apparent because the the system rewards scarcity in its corporate structure. And labor is basically is competed for just like clients are, just like profit is. You can't get rid of the labor system because people have to work. It's a, it's a set system. You have to participate in the labor system in order to gain profit, and you have to use profit in order to gain resources. And this, this structure, I found, is extremely despotic. And given our technological understanding, I'll go this direction first. Given our technological understanding, it's easy to see how this system is completely outdated. For example, back in you know, the Industrial Revolution, everyone had factory jobs, more or less. It was a highly factory-oriented thing during the initiation of the Industrial Revolution. And then machines finally came to be. Machines really started to develop. And now if you look at, say, an automobile production plan and compare the number of people that are actually oriented you know, based on you know, amount what is produced, it's extremely small. And a very small percentage of human beings are actually engaged and say an automobile production right. plant now. It's all robots. It's all robots. And what this means is that technology is starting to challenge the labor system. And I think there's a clash that's happening here. If you have a machine that can do something faster and that machine eases things and gets things moving a lot quicker, the corporation steps back because of its profit motive and says, well, we're not going to let people go early. We're going to make them work, you know, the set, set, the set traditional amount of hours, and then we're just going to put out more. And most likely we won't give anybody any raises or anything. In fact, more people will likely be laid off through time because more mechanized automation will come to fruition. So this, is, this presents something very interesting to me. And it's a slight tangent from what I really began on as far as aberrant behavior, but I think it's very important. So I started thinking about this. I started thinking about technology. I started making new friends and doing different research with people that had new ideas about social design, and that's when we can get into the Venus Project which I think is of tremendous value for people to think about. Even if they don't agree with it, they need to learn about it and understand the multiple facets of this particular philosophical angle. It's extremely, extremely relevant. So the monetary system is based on scarcity. And as long as this system is in place, a profit system, you're not going to have, say, sustainability or abundance or efficiency because it's not rewarded in the structure. Problems will only be resolved in society when money can be made from that resolution. So, you know, there's no wonder that no one's giving a damn about the people dying in Africa from starvation and HIV, because there's no money in that. You know, this is, this is the type of train of thought that people need to start to wake or up. Or the middle class. Nobody cares about them either, Peter. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's multifaceted, and 